Well, a post-mortem will be conducted into Queensland Labor's resounding by-election defeat to assess the effectiveness of Stephen Miles' campaign ahead of the state election in October. Now, the Premier has already given his verdict. Holding on to particularly Ipswich West was always going to be very hard. I said that. Um, this result, these results are clearly very bad. Uh, I was expecting a bad result, and they're even worse than that, clearly. They wanted to send us a message that we need to work harder, particularly on cost of living and on community safety. Joining us live now is the Queensland Opposition Leader, David Chrisafulli. David, a very good morning to you. Is the Queensland Government currently on life support? Good morning, Peter. Well, history shows that by-election results don't just translate to general election results. So I can assure you we remain firmly the underdog, and, and history shows that, and the number of seats we need to win show that. But what happened on the weekend is we asked Queenslanders to send a message to a very bad government about cost of living and health and housing and youth crime, and uh, Queenslanders did that. And the message was they don't trust them, they don't trust them to fix the issues, and they want us to keep going and raising mm. those issues and putting forward the solutions. And, and we're going to redouble our efforts to do that, I can assure you. You'd surely be favourites now, wouldn't you, David, to win the election, not so much the underdog? I mean, news poll last week suggested you might, you might win up to 18 extra seats. Well, Peter, firstly, it's not about me, it's about Queenslanders. Um, and I can tell you history shows that that's not the case. And I'll give a sober uh, reminder to viewers about how big the task is we need to achieve. Firstly, we need to get about 13 seats, which is absolutely monumental. Mm. Uh, but of the last 12 general elections in this state, the Labor Party's won 11. So I'm under no illusions about how big the task is, but I'll make this point. It is a very, very bad government, and it's been a very bad government, and they are completely and utterly, utterly racked by chaos and crisis, and I want Queenslanders to contrast the opposition. We are united, we are focused, we're disciplined, we're hungry to serve, and mm. we are putting forward policies in every one of those areas where we've outlined the challenges that lie ahead. OK. I know you don't want to get ahead of yourself, but if you do win, Dave, you'll be the only Liberal leader on the mainland. So how do you feel about suggestions in the AFR this morning that Anthony Albanese might be using the Queensland election as a stalking horse in that Queenslanders would use the state election to vent their frustrations at Labor, but will perhaps be a little kinder for the federal election around the corner? Peter, I stood on a polling booth um, on Saturday for about eight hours. I didn't have a single person raise my electoral fortunes with me, and nor Mr Albanese's. I can tell okay. you what they did raise. They raised the issues of youth crime and health and housing. And I'll tell you a story that our candidate uh, in the area got. Two people who came up to him and said that they voted Labor all their life, but their younger brother got held up at knife point for a pair of shoes. Mm. Now, that is a youth crime crisis, and Queenslanders get that. And for every one of those challenges, health, housing, youth crime, cost of living, we've put forward solutions and targets that will be met if government changes. And that's my focus. My focus is on Queenslanders. And Queenslanders need change. They deserve change. The Labor Party expect Queenslanders just to keep voting for them. We are going to earn that right. And in doing so, we're going to put forward solutions to those challenges that are weighing this state down more than any other in the nation. OK. What about solutions to the Olympics? Because there is a blueprint out today, out this morning, an independent review saying a $3.4 billion stadium should be built in Victoria Park plus a $2.5 billion indoor arena at the Roma Street Parkland. Now, you wanted costings. We've spoken about this in the past. Here are some of them. Do you support what you've seen this morning? Well, firstly, Peter, I haven't seen the review, but let me make a few assessments. The first is the Gabba redevelopment was $1 billion, and then it went to $2.7 billion. We now know, after a 60-day review, that one person has been able to find out it's actually $3.4 billion. Mm. Now, that shows the government is completely and utterly in cover-up mode. That's the first thing. Now, I redouble the commitment. We need an independent infrastructure delivery authority, and that's the only way we're going to sort all of this out. But my focus is on generational infrastructure, road, rail, a 20-year tourism plan, using the Paralympic Games to make our state the most accessible. I want to see a telecommunications plan so that people across the state can benefit during disasters. I would love a 20-year tourism vision so every part of Queensland can benefit. All we've seen over the last 1,000 days from the government, and the now Premier has been in charge of infrastructure the whole time, it's been focused on sporting stadiums, 
and the party for the rich and the famous. That's not the priority of Queenslanders, and that's not it, what it was sold to us on. It was about generational infrastructure, and that's why I commit to an independent infrastructure delivery authority, and it is going to be about generational infrastructure. Okay.